Good afternoon. Welcome to the Towers Business Development webinar, where we're going to discuss the sort of service that a virtual CFO can supply and in so doing perform an accountability partner service for the chief executive officer of a business. I'm Peter Towers, Managing Director of Towers Business Development. Welcome. If you have any questions, during this uh, webinar, can you please type them into your uh, computer and I will answer the questions later in the webinar recording. So what is an accountability partner? I think it's someone who has taken responsibility to uh, operate various components of the business in an efficient manner so that the CEO has confidence that their back's been covered, that someone is really taking ownership of that particular area of the business. This is a role that a virtual CFO can offer to a firm. So the virtual CFO role um, is becoming more widespread in small, medium enterprises especially businesses that aspire to grow and to become uh, a larger business, either through scaling up, or perhaps uh, at some stage, they're gonna go through an initial public offer. I think it's a natural assumption that whoever's appointed the virtual CFO, in lots of cases, this will be an accountancy firm that is offering these types of services that that person would also be the accountability partner because that makes it very similar to what happens in larger organizations, that the key person for the chief executive officer or the managing director tends to be the chief financial officer within the organization. So I see this role as being very important for SMEs because the person who has the title of CEO in a small medium enterprise organization tends to be a very isolated person because even though they've got a range of people answering to them, there's not many people on the same level within an organization and this can make it very lonely. A CFO that's supplying backup services to the CEO can really give some comfort to the CEO that someone is uh, watching their, uh, their back and making sure things are happening. So what could be performed in this role? You might like to think about what could happen within your organization. What are the types of things that might occur? Well, I think it's monitoring the relationship with major government regulators that your business might be dealing with. Most of us have to deal with the Australian Taxation Office. So I think that's a given. And these days, workplace health and safety is also a very important area, as is Fair Work Australia. Now, there may be others that relate to your particular area business's requirements. It could be an environmental authority. It could be a local government organization. It could be another federal or state or territory government agency that you have uh, dealings with. If you're in the building industry, you would be dealing with the builders registration board in each state and so on. And what this basically means is that those organizations will be requesting information from your business, your company on an ongoing basis. And someone needs to be responsible for making sure that their requests have been answered, that the information has been transferred to them. So this is one of those areas that you should be looking at. Let's look at the next one that I think comes into this area, and that's implementation of accounting systems for each business unit as if they were standalone businesses. This is a, uh, a pet subject of mine, I've got to admit, because I don't like 
three or four different business units all being thrown into one profit and loss account because it destroys the ability for anyone to properly analyze the performance of that particular individual business component within that enlarged profit and loss account. It's not possible. And the management level at your local leadership level should be asking for their profit and loss account. They want to see how they perform. And just as importantly, we can then have key performance indicators that are linked to that profit and loss account. So I think it's very important. And that then means that the document which accountants call the chart of accounts must be designed that it suits that particular business unit. Now, invariably, there'll be one chart of accounts for the overall business or company. But what I'm driving at is there needs to be specific recognition that you have a business operation within the organization, which might be different to all of the others. And they need to be accommodated in the chart of accounts so that their particular story is able to be told. And they're not just lumped into general income or general expenses. Break them down so that their performance can be analyzed and reviewed. And meaningful accounting data needs to be produced for some other activities. If it's necessary to have a job costing system, that the virtual CFO has implemented that. This is really making sure that the accountability function is carried out. It's not a matter of referring it to uh, back to the CEO. Hopefully, if there's been a mandate given to the CFO to handle these things, he or she would have gone ahead and implemented an appropriate job costing system, because that would be very important for that particular business activity to be able to get accurate results on the individual jobs that have been undertaken during a month. If they're holding stock, there needs to be a proper inventory system implemented. Now, that might be a company-wide inventory system, or it might just be for this particular uh, business unit, especially if they've got specialised uh, inventory that they're handling within their um, business operations. Work in progress. If um, the um, business is involved in, in projects whereby um, work is being progressively undertaken and being progressively billed to the customer, implementing a work in progress system gives a far better control for the leadership team to understand what's happening in this particular activity. Obviously, if your business is giving credit, there should be a debtor system. I'm not meaning that this would be isolated to one business unit. This would be a company-wide debtor system. But there needs to be a written debtor system implemented that looks at every aspect that ensures that the person who has the responsibility for administering debtors has been trained. That person should understand the very important time requirements relative to lodgement of documents that are required for registration of a customer on the personal property securities register. And they should understand the urgency of making sure that tax invoices are prepared and emailed to customers as soon as possible, 24 hours. And then on each of those tax invoices in clear, large print should be the due date for payment of that invoice so that we can try to contribute to reducing debtors days outstanding, which ties up a lot of money. I've already mentioned the personal property securities register. It's, um, not good legislation, I don't think. But if your clients want to protect their assets, they need to have registered on the personal property securities register if those assets are going to be held at someone else's premises or in someone else's possession. This is a big area. And if you're a business that's 
dealing with people who are progress paying you, there can be real problems if you have not registered that customer on the personal property securities register, because unfortunately there could be an insolvency practitioner appointed to that customer and the insolvency practitioner could be making claims that your business has received a preferential payment. The one way to really protect yourself from these sort of claims is to have registered that customer on the personal property securities register. So that's worth looking at. And then the key performance indicators of the various business units need to be examined because larger businesses get key performance indicator updates on all sorts of things on a daily, in some cases, an hourly basis, then daily, and there's others that they receive weekly and then others monthly. And that's basically the cycle. They then repeat it again, daily, weekly, monthly, and perhaps hourly, as I said. Your virtual CFO should be ensuring that this information that is being prepared is being prepared promptly. It's no use getting it three days after the the one day it needs to be there the next morning so that management has got the information so that they can react to any adverse uh, situation that obviously occurred the day before. But it's also very important that the CFO has made sure that the team, the leadership team, first of all, and then the actual team working in that particular activity clearly understands what these key performance indicators are conveying to them. Because after all, that's why someone in your organization has gone to the trouble to produce key performance indicators, but they need to be understood. They need to uh, be uh, able to be utilized by the recipient leadership team members to implement whatever changes are needed within the organization if it's had a bad result. The next step then is to have a business health checks introduced whereby there's an ongoing process that the key performance indicators are recorded so that they can be um, analyzed as to what happened the day before on the daily KPIs or the week before or the three weeks before on the weekly KPIs and similar on the monthly, going back one month, two months, three months. It's very important to do this because a, a, a change can be immediately identified. For argument's sake, if average sales in a particular business unit has been running on very nicely at about $33 per customer and suddenly it comes in at $72. I think someone should inquire, what did we do right that day, yesterday that caused that to happen? Or is there a mistake that's been made? And of course, just as bad, if the sales drop to $12 instead of the $33, again, there should be an inquiry. That's why this information has been produced. What went wrong yesterday? Is the information correct? Was there a breakdown somewhere? What caused this to happen? Because if it happens again today and then the next day, there's a potential problem in the business. So the quicker that the leadership team can react, the better. The monitoring of pricing and or charge out rate calculations is an important role that your virtual CFO should also be playing for you. Looking at the pricing, how was the pricing calculated? Has it taken into account all of the costs of the team members working in that area? Has it taken into account their individual productivity? Are all the overheads included? Has the charge out rates reflected the, uh, the profit that's been built into the calculations of the charger? That's the profit expectation. And is there then monitoring of the actual performance each month to see how close the actual P&L account looks to what's been calculated in the 
establishment of appropriate pricing or charge out rates for the business. And if your client is, if your business is a retailer or a wholesaler, obviously what you're lining up is the is the ongoing um, turmoil between various types of stock, some that are stars, some that are cash cows, some that are problem mines, some that are horrors, and the markups that can be achieved on each of those to then look at the overheads and the wages and will this all work out that you're going to achieve a profit? Or is there some financial engineering that can be implemented to try to ensure that management is aware that if, if an extra 20% of product B can be sold, that the overall profit target will probably be achieved. And this is the ongoing turmoil that retailers have. And you can see that obviously some retailers are able to do it better than others. And I got a little bit in front of myself then. There's the, the, um, the PowerPoint that I meant to bring up for that. This is an ongoing turmoil going on in retail and wholesalers. It's no use selling 95% of your sales being your cash cow items in most businesses there won't be enough profit being generated because normally they're, they're fairly high volume sales, but very low markups because everyone sells them or there's price controls reflected on them. Things like milk and bread and newspapers. They're not a star stock in anyone's business. There needs to be budgets for each operation prepared by or supervised by uh, the chief financial officer. And these should be uh, passed uh, through and discussed with the leadership team person who's responsible for that particular activity. And that is the comparison that should then be made each month when the financial accounts for that month are prepared. And it's essential that financial accounts are being prepared each month, not once in every quarter or once every six months. And when all this information has been prepared initially, we need to bring to account the cash flow forecast and sit back and analyze it and decide whether that properly reflects what is happening within the business. Projected balance sheets. It's great to do budgets and cash flow forecasts, but they're a bit meaningless unless you've also projected what the balance sheet's going to look like in three years' time. And is this what the uh, CEO and the board of directors are going to be happy with? This sort of picture in three years' time, what's the business balance sheet going to look like? Because this should be a reflection of the business plan that the business has also produced. Businesses need to develop strategies. Normally, it's a responsibility for the CEO, but the virtual chief, finan chief financial officer can assist the CEO in these very important determinations because the strategies need to be developed. They then need to be implemented, which is the real hard task. Government grants. There are hundreds of government grants on offer in Australia from the Australian state and territory governments. Your virtual CFO should be the person responsible, I think, to monitor those and to make sure that your leadership team are fully aware of the grants that are available. So the decision can be made as to whether an application is going to be lodged for a particular grant. I've already mentioned that financial accounts should be prepared on a monthly basis and compared to the budgets. And then it's very important that a monthly business review meeting is held. This would be the leadership team with the CEO coming together to review every aspect of the business and to then send a report on to the board of directors. So we would have the financial reports that have been prepared. Minutes should be prepared of the previous meeting and out of every minute, minutes of a meeting prepared, there should be an action plan that has been distributed to various people in the organisation 
you're required to prepare a report on such and such and make sure it's submitted back uh, in time for the next board of advice meeting, which is on a particular date. It's a very important part of the process of accountability by other people who are the custodians of various information or knowledge and the leadership team are looking for input from them. On an annual basis, there's a necessity to update business plans. I think business plans are very important for every type of business. And the best way to keep the business on track is to update the business plan every 12 months, have a series of uh, team meetings and leadership team meetings to get suggestions and ideas and fresh, fresh thinking, and then implement it within to a business plan, take it to the board of directors and get it approved, and then implement it. It needs to be a living document. I think it's also a good idea for companies who are aspiring to grow, and that's why you would have a virtual CFO. That is to have an annual valuation of your business prepared. Your virtual CFO could prepare that using normal accounting processes for the valuation of a private company and compare this year's valuation to last year's valuation to give the leadership team and the directors an appreciation of what value increase there has been in the business in the last 12 months. And the strategy should continually be reviewed. They're not something that should be prepared and then thrown in the bottom drawer, only to be pulled out if there's some sort of dispute. They need to be another living document within the organization. They need to be implemented. Therefore, they need to be continually reviewed. My suggestion here is unless there has been an agreement, they're going to be reviewed monthly or three monthly. It would be at least an annual basis that they're on the list. They're looked at and a decision is made as to whether they're going to be updated in any way. So what additional activities could you add to this list for your business? I'm sure there are some other items that you could sit down and talk to the person you might consider appointing as your virtual chief financial officer to help you. One of the big um, matters that happens in a public company, and I was the CFO in a listed public company, I found was the ongoing questions that I got from the CEO or from external directors and some of the other leadership team members that required answering. Can we do this? What would it cost to do that? What's happening with the currencies in certain overseas countries? So where um, are you headed in that area? Who gives you that advice? Who, who do you submit these questions to? This is one of the very important areas that you can, you as the CEO, if we're talking to CEOs in this um, video that you can look at, you know, will you be able to perform your role better if a uh, virtual CFO, someone that's not there every day, someone who might only be physically in your premises once or twice a month, but you're in ongoing communication, you're using this type of communication, you're using Zoom and the CFOs in regular contact so that they can be assisting you to manage your company. Because if you were a larger organization, you probably have a full-time CFO there. But quite frankly, I think every business needs some component of a CFO every day in their business. Just that in most businesses have always perceived they couldn't afford that. But if you're going to grow and scale up, you need to have that sort of input occurring. So I suggest to you that the sooner you go down that track and get started, the quicker your business will be able to grow because you'll have that information being supplied to you. 
So would you like to receive details of the type of services that uh, Towers Business Development could supply to you along these lines, being able to offer to perform a virtual CFO service to you? We can undertake that role for businesses literally anywhere in Australia, but uh, obviously it does depend how much uh, one-on-one uh, -on -one contact there is, but we are currently undertaking or proposing to undertake assignments in two states so that uh, uh, if that gives you some idea of uh, what we can offer to provide. Our offer to you is to undertake a no obligation 60 minute Zoom conversation with you, preferably with the CEO of your business to answer your questions on how we would go about supplying this type of service and to discuss initiatives suitable for your business that we would recommend that you incorporate. All you've got to do is contact us and I will get back to you. We will, after we've had the Zoom meeting, we will then indicate to you whether we're going to submit a proposal to you or not. If we elect to submit a proposal to you, we will submit it in writing. It would outline the uh, services that we could provide to you in performing the virtual CFO role. And we would give you a quotation for the delivery of the service that we've outlined within the proposal. So we can assist organisations to do a whole range of matters centred around financial uh, matters um, relative to regular meetings. I think the meeting structure is one of the most important control mechanisms that needs to be input into a business. And it starts daily with the daily huddle. Has that been undertaken? About five minutes throughout the organisation in various groups. One group, of course, is the leadership team, then looks at the weekly meetings and then the monthly business review meeting, the board of directors meeting, various re retreat meetings to plan business plans and, and strategy reviews, etc. We can help you with that. We can supply you with an experienced chief financial officer, company secretary type service based on my experience and performing that role and uh, based on the consulting services that I've offered to a large number of uh, businesses over the last 20 years as a specialist consultant. So if you're interested, please contact me. I think many SMEs benefit by having an external uh, advisor as the facilitator for a range of uh, business activities, but that's up to you to judge. So if you have any questions about anything that we've presented to you today, please don't hesitate to contact me. You can send me an email, peter at, e at towersbusiness.com.au, or you can go to our website and have a look at some of our material, www.towersbusiness.com.au. Our next webinar is looking at business planning, and it's on Friday the 17th of September at 2 p.m. If you'd like to join us for that webinar, please go to www.towersbusiness.com.au and click on to webinars and register for the free webinar on the 17th of September. I'm just checking because I forgot to check. I've got no questions. But if you do have some questions out of today's discussion, please send me an email with the question and I will get an answer back to you. We also supply uh, to uh, everyone on our database a link to the recording of these webinars. So obviously, if you want to play the webinars back at a more convenient time for you, please do so. So for more information, I think I've already told you all that. You can also ring me if you like, 1800 232 088. So thank you very much for being with us today and I look forward to hearing from you in the not too distant future. Thank you very much. Goodbye.